play Jesus says. Okay? Got it? Got it? Yeah? No? Yeah? Okay. All right. Touch your nose. Okay, Josh, sit down. Sit down. If you touched your nose, sit down. Josh, sit down. Sit down. All right. All right. Jesus says, touch your nose. Jesus says, touch your ear. Jesus says, touch your nose. Jesus says, touch your ear. Jesus says, touch your nose. Jesus says, touch your ear. Touch your nose. Uh, if you touched your nose, you're out. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> all right. All right. Jesus says, pat your belly. Jesus says, rub your head. Jesus says, pat your head. Jesus says, pat your head and rub your belly. Wow, you guys are very good. You guys are very good. All right, you guys can stop. If you stop, you got to sit down. Sit down, all three of you. All three of you. You guys stop. You guys stop. You stop. Sit down, Elizabeth. You stop. All right. Elizabeth, sit down. No, seriously, you guys can stop. Oh, you stopped. Jesus says stop. Jesus says hop on one foot. All right, switch. If you switched, you got to sit down. Luke, you switched. Oh, you guys are getting good. You guys are a little too good. All right. Jesus says do jumping jacks. All right, go ahead and stop. All right, and seriously, stop. And no, no, stop. Jesus says stop. All right. Wow. All right, we'll get, oh, we got to get hard. We got to get hard. You, we got to get hard. All right, if you're still standing, come on up here to the front and line up. All right, you're out, you're out, you're out, you're out. Sit down. Oh. Oh, good job. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, Jesus says, come on up and stand in the front. If you are still standing. Only if you're still standing. All right. Now you all get to watch and help me. You ready? Make sure you have enough room. All right. Jesus says, I'm out of ideas. Jesus says, touch your nose. Jesus says, touch your knee. Jesus says, touch your toes. Jesus says, touch your knee. Jesus says, touch your toes. Jesus says, touch your knee. Jesus says, touch your toes. Jesus says, touch your knee. He says, touch your toes. Jesus says, touch your knee. Jesus says, touch your toes. Jesus says, touch your knee. Touch your toes. Oh, if you oh. touch your toes, you're out. Oh. 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 All right. Come on over here to the center, guys. Oh, you're out, Gabriel. Jesus did the same. Oh, we got a winner. Give him a big hand. Give him a big hand. Are you learning for peanuts? There you go. Awesome. Awesome. How many of you guys have your Bibles? Hold them up. If you have your Bibles, going to church without your Bible is like going swimming without your bathing suit. You always have to bring your Bible to church. All right. Shh. You guys are talking, and I'm up here talking. You guys know the rules. All right. We are going to talk about Jonah. How many have ever heard the story of Jonah? All right, I need a volunteer though. Someone who wants to help me out. Elijah, come on up here. Come on up here. This is Jonah. Everyone say, hi, Jonah. Hi, Jonah. Your hair, dude. Seriously. All right, there you go. All right, there you go. You see, Jonah, one day, 
Jonah was praying, you got to get on your knees and pray. And God told Jonah, Jonah, go to Tarshish. Is that what happened? Yes. No, that's not what happened. You guys told me you knew the story. It says, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. He wasn't calling anyone a ninny. He, it was the name of a city. You see, the people of Nineveh were Assyrians. Now, the Assyrians had come in and captured Israel, and they were really, really mean and murdered and killed off a whole bunch of people, probably even Jonah's family. How many think you would like to go to Nineveh? Knowing that people probably killed off your family. Yippee! Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> no, no. So, Nineveh's over there, and so what Jonah did was he went the opposite direction. And he boarded a ship for Tarshish. Not tartar sauce. Tarshish. Alright, it is a fish story. And tartar sauce is good with fish. And so here's what the story goes. If you're following along, we're now in Jonah chapter 1. Jonah, it says, goes down deep into the ship and falls sound asleep. He is sitting there sleeping, snoring. Snoring really loud. Yes, he's snoring. Sounding a lot like Pastor Aishi. Don't tell her I said that. But he's snoring. And he's exhausted. Because when you don't trust and obey God, it is exhausting. Did you know that? When you don't live your life obeying God, you get exhausted. Because God created us to obey, to worship, and to love Him. Jonah's running from God. He didn't want to do what God said. So we're, he's on a boat. I need a couple sailors. Who wants to be some sailors? All right, Angel, come on up here. Who wants to be another sailor? Come on up here, Daniel. The sailors, you got, this is the boat up here. He's in the, he's in the hall. So he's down there for right now. You got to stand on up here. Here's what happened. A storm blew up out of nowhere. And these very experienced, mean-looking sailors, they're not mean-looking, but they're supposed to be looking mean. These mean-looking sailors are crying for their mommy because they are scared out of their mind. Mommy. You guys got to start crying for your mommy. Come on. There you go. It says they're crying out to other gods. That's what it says. It says, but Jonah had gone below deck where he could lay down and fall asleep. So Jonah is laying there sleeping. The captain went to him. How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. He may take notice of us and not perish. In other words, we're all going to die. I love my mommy too much. I love my mommy. Because they know they're going to die. So Jonah gets up, goes up on deck. And says, listen. Listen. Okay. I'm at fault. I'm at fault. <laughs> I serve the God. I serve the God. Who created heaven. Who created heaven. And earth. And earth. And controls everything. And controls everything. <laughs> so throw me overboard. So throw me overboard. So before they throw him overboard. Now, how many think Jonah could have said, hey, I'm running from God. Can we go to Nineveh instead of Tarshish? How many think the storm would have stopped? You see, Jonah is not the smartest person. Not this Jonah, the actual Jonah. Okay, this person is really smart. He's all academic. Two years in a row. Yeah, give it up for him. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Disobey God. 
How many think that makes a lot of sense? Like, you try and run from God because you don't want to do what He tells you, and then God lets bad things happen, a big storm, to where these experienced sailors are crying for their mommies, and you still are trying to run from God. That doesn't make much sense, does it? No. No, it doesn't. So, Jonah goes, here's what's going to happen, guys. Here's what's going to happen, guys. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. You guys can follow along in Jonah if you want. Throw me overboard. Throw me over the spot. <laughs> and so they pick him up gently. Gently? <laughs> gently. And they toss him overboard. Very gently. So he doesn't break anything. And he goes down deep into the sea. And then sailors go take their seat. Here's what it says. Jonah chapter 2. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly. Jonah went from being a prophet of God, who God talked to, to someone running from God, to a person being thrown overboard to fish food. You see, when you don't obey God, God will put you in a position to where you will. It says this, Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. How many think that's a long time? It took him three days and three nights of being in the belly of a fish before he finally prayed. That's how much he didn't like the people of Nineveh. That's how much he did not want to obey God. Jordan was very, very stubborn. He'd rather become fish food. How many haven't eaten anything in for three days at a time? How many haven't eaten something for like three hours? You're like, oh, it's starting to be food. Can you imagine <laughs> three days of not eating? And have you ever, have you, how many of you ever fished in here? Raise your hand. You fished, all right. What, uh, have you ever had to gut the fish? Yeah. And clean the fish? Yeah. How many love what's inside the fish? How would you like to be, that would be your bedroom? one time and I caught this fish and inside the fish's belly was another fish and inside that fish's belly was an even smaller fish that was sort of like Jonah he was inside this belly's fish for three days and three nights when he finally said okay God I need help so he's on his knees praying with seaweed up to his neck because it's nasty and dirty and fish guts everywhere. And he goes, God, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will obey you. I will obey you. Get me out of here, please. That's right. That's probably exactly what he said. Verse 10 of chapter 2. The Lord commanded the fish to vomit Jonah on the dry ground. So Jonah went from being a prophet of God, someone who hears God speaking to him, hears God talking to him, to someone who doesn't want to listen to God, to somebody who is a fugitive on a ship running from God, to being thrown overboard, to being fish food, to being fish vomit. <laughs> How many think this is a bad week for Jonah? Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit of a bad week. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Jonah. Excuse me here. I got to get the gut thing going on. Jonah, go to the city of Nineveh and proclaim the message I gave you. And here's what it says. Verse 3 of chapter 3. 
Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. You guys give Jonah a big hand. You see, we have to do what Jesus says to do. If we don't, we could end up like Jonah. God will call some of you guys to be pastors. God will call some of you guys to be missionaries. God may call some of you guys to be teachers and doctors and lawyers and construction workers and factory workers. And, but no matter what, God calls you to love Him. God calls you to obey Him. And God calls you to trust Him. You see, we have to trust and obey God. How many think Jonah would have been swallowed by a big fish if he would have just obeyed God the first time? I don't. I think he would have obeyed God and everything would have been okay. But God put this story in the Bible so that we could understand how important it is to obey God.